Hi, in this video we're going to show you a free tool you could use to synchronize folders and their files between several devices. So this could be used on the network or even over the internet. So it uses a peer-to-peer -peer platform rather than like a cloud storage platform like you would do with OneDrive. So it goes directly to your computer. So obviously uh, any device you're syncing with has to be online and connected to SyncThing. So this will work for Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Uh, Android, not iPhones, I don't believe. So there are a lot of uh, options you could use to synchronize. All right, so once you download the program, you have to unzip it, and it's just an executable, so there's nothing to install. So the only downside is once you restart your computer, you're going to have to manually restart the Sync Thing app here, unless you set it up, you know, make a shortcut to the executable, put it in your startup file. Uh, set up something in Task Scheduler to start with your computer or use some other application to, you know, maybe run it as some type of service so it starts with your computer. All right, so we're going to be using two computers here, a Windows 11 Pro and a Windows 11 Home. So one has dark mode and one will have light mode to hopefully uh, make it a little more clear which one is which. So I'm going to give you just the basic overview and show you some of the settings and configuration. Otherwise, it might be a little hard to follow since you're not going to know what computer is what and what files are what uh, just by watching it unless you watch it you know a bunch of times all right so right now we're on the windows 11 pro computer in dark mode here so i have the executable so i'll double click it you'll see it opens up this command prompt window and then it already opened up the web interface so it's done via a website so if it doesn't open up automatically this is the address here uh, which you could change so it's the local address with this port number and you could actually change the IP address here if you want to only run it on one computer or if you want to use a different port and that type of thing. All right, so here's the computer name. So you can set up authentication with a user and password for more security. You don't have to, and I didn't on this computer, but that's an option. So here are any folders that are shared. So this one is called shared. And I have that on my D drive here called Shared Files. And if I click on it here, you can see the folder path, which is Shared Files, the ID, and some of these other settings here. All right, so I have a Word document here with some uh, information about some of these settings here. So we'll go through this real quick so hopefully it make a little more sense. All right, so we have our folder ID, which is this right here so this is a unique identifier that links a specific folder across multiple devices so it's not the folder name or path so it's just used by sync thing and then the folder path is obvious because that's your local folder there then we have global and local state so the global state is the total set of files and folders that should exist across all devices and the local state is the actual files and folders that exist right now on the device. All right, then we have rescans, which is the process where your device checks its synced folders for any changes such as modified, new additions, or deletions. It uses real-time scans and scheduled scans every hour. So right now it's set to every hour. Then we have the pull order. So this determines the sequence in which files are downloaded from other devices during synchronization. And you should be able to change that in the settings. And then we have some other options here, which we'll see when we go to the settings. All right, so this is shared with Win 11 Home. So like I said, we're on Win 11 Pro, sharing with Win 11 Home. And then the last scan. And then we have some other information about our upload and download rate, our uptime version, and so on. And then here's our remote device, Windows 11 Home, and it's up to date. All right, so... If you wanted to add a device, you go up to Actions, Show ID, and then you could email it, copy it, scan it with your phone here. And then you would go to the other computer and click on Add Remote Device, and then you could paste it in there. And then it will show up in your list as a connected device. So you need to do this on both computers. So you have to go get that ID, go over to the other computer, put it in, then get the ID from that computer, go back to the other one, and then put that in. Then we also have some sharing options here, some advanced options. 
All right, so let's go over to the other computer real quick and see what that looks like. All right, so you can see we're on the other computer with the non-dark mode. You can see the interface is the same. Uh, here's our shared folder, and we have this other spreadsheet folder here, which is right here, and that's not shared. So what we'll do is we'll share this by going to Edit, Sharing, and since we already have this computer connected, we'll click on that. And then if you want to add an encryption password for security, you could do that. So we'll click on Save. All right, so now Spreadsheets is shared. So we're going to go back to the other computer. Now you can see we have this pop-up message here. So we're on Win11 Pro, so Win11 Home wants to share this folder. So we're going to add it. And then we could call it whatever we want. Here's the ID. And then we could set a folder path. So this doesn't have to match the folder path on the source computer because obviously you may not have the same drive letter so we could put whatever we want so let's say we wanted to put it on our D drive here on a folder called spreadsheets or shared spreadsheets so we could just type it in so if the folders not there it'll make it for you so we'll put it on the D drive under shared spreadsheets click on save so now it's syncing so now if we go here we have that folder and then here are the files that were synced from Windows 11 home let's say we make a new file here so we made a file in our shared folder on Win11 Pro. So now let's see if it syncs over to Win11 Home. Okay, here's our spreadsheets folder that's shared. And then here's our new file that we just made. So you can see it's pretty quick and it works quite well. And then you could pause here, rescan everything, add another folder, and so on. Alright, so let's go back over to the other computer and check out some of the other settings. Okay, so scroll up here. All right, so let's click on settings here. All right, so device name. So here's the minimum free space. So this is set to only 1%, so you might want to bump that up in case you're worried about running out of space. And then the usage reporting is set to disable. You could have upgrades on or off here. Go to the GUI. So here's where you could change the address and set up a username and password for the web interface so if you don't want to leave it wide open you want to have to be able to put in a password to get to sync thing you could set that up you could change your theme here you could set your connection rates for incoming and outgoing traffic configure any ignore devices or ignore the folders right then up here we have actions this will take you to the settings as well we can go to advanced so they say to be careful here, so some things you could check out. You may not want to change those. Alright, then a couple other settings here I think I missed. Alright, so the file versioning, you could change this as well. Here's what that does. So this lets you keep track of older versions of files when they're modified or deleted, so you can recover them later if needed. So right now it's set to no file versioning on default. And you could use one of these other ones here. And then we have the ignore patterns if you want to set that up. And these are rules that tell sync thing to exclude specific files or folders from syncing. And we have some advanced right here as well. Here's your rescan interval, the pull order here if you want to do random, which is the default, smallest first, largest first, and so on. And then you have your send and receive. So you could configure it to be send and receive, send only, or receive only, as well as receive encrypted. So that way, if you don't want to have a two-way sync, you could set it to be one way or have it only receive encrypted files. Then you have another option here for your minimum free disk space, which we saw before. And then some ownership settings here, and you could click on the help at any time for one of these to get more information. All right, so I know I was doing a lot of back and forth and jumping around, but that's kind of the problem when you're trying to demonstrate uh, something like this that works on two different computers for synchronizing. 
but overall you just need to download and run the program on both computers go to your actions here get your ID and then add the device and then go to the other computer get the ID at the device because you have to have both devices talking to each other in order to sync so if you only do it on one it's not going to work and then once you have your devices configured just add a folder give it a label whatever you want uh, this stays the same put in your path configure any sharing options and then once you have it configured you could go to edit change anything you need and that type of thing all right so i would just suggest you know configuring both of your devices or however many devices you're going to do and then just play around with the folder sharing put some files in there see if it makes it over to the other side and then you'll get a better understanding of how it works because like i said it's a little confusing unless you're actually doing it yourself all right so i will put a link in the description where you could download sync thing and you could try it out for yourself all right thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe mm -hmm.